Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today, and hope you're all having a great time. For those who have been closely following the exciting developments detailed in the recent hot staging article on Massey's website, we're thrilled to share some intriguing updates. Thanks to the meticulous efforts of Ring Watchers and CSI Starbase SPMT Tracker, we have at last managed to observe the inaugural trial run. The event took place on the 7th of August, although we have presently only documented a singular test. The structural integrity of the ring appears to be resilient in the face of mechanical strains, a highly positive indication indeed. The configuration comprises of four pistons and corresponding straps that traverse diagonally from the base to the apex, thus introducing a unique load distribution mechanism unlike the conventional top-down compression forces. These components can be partially discerned through the openings in the provided photograph. In case you're curious about the components labeled as internal straps in the subsequent set of replays, they correspond to the moving elements being observed. Meanwhile, a noteworthy development unfolded today with the unveiling of the former 522 nose cone, replete with an accompanying door. This particular iteration boasts an electrical unit that bears the inscription HLS. Speculation leads us to ponder if this feature might be indicative of some form of life support assessment or evaluation that's being undertaken in conjunction with this nose cone iteration. Then we've got this BART thing, which is short for Big Ass Adjustable Raptor Table, rolling in for some serious work in the booster skirt and to wrap up the Raptor installation. They're moving it across the back of the LC, headed towards the OLM. From the looks of it, they're probably focusing on the inner part of the table rather than the inside of the launch mount. And there might be some big design changes coming our way. I mean, seriously, major stuff. The thrust section of that booster? Yeah, they went ahead and chopped off its header tank. Crazy, right? Now, the real head scratcher is, why would they do that? I mean, it's like a puzzle we're all trying to solve. But as of now, it's still a mystery that's keeping everyone guessing. Just a few days back, Booster 9 embarked on a crucial journey, conducting a dynamic static fire test that involved the ignition of all 33 Raptor engines. This significant event marked a critical step in the preparations for the eagerly anticipated second orbital flight attempt. Envision the scene, the dream scenario where all engines burst forth into life simultaneously, their collective roar reverberating through the air. The anticipation was palpable, the hope soaring high. However, as often happens, the bridge between dreams and reality can be a challenging one to cross. A mere 2.74 seconds into the static fire test, the narrative took an unexpected twist. Four engines, perhaps longing for an early intermission, opted to bow out prematurely, promptly halting the test. The outcome was far from the desired outcome, ending the trial sooner than both the engineers and enthusiasts had anticipated. The successful static fire of SpaceX's Booster 7 brings attention to the current struggles faced by Booster 9, prompting an examination of the differences between their respective test campaigns. Booster 7's journey was marked by a series of challenges and triumphs that illustrated the complexity of rocket engineering. Initially, Booster 7 encountered setbacks such as a failed spin prime test, leading to an explosion that necessitated repairs. The test campaign had to be paced gradually, involving tests of individual engines, spin prime tests, and eventually a three-engine test. Even after four additional spin primes, Booster 7 finally succeeded in testing all 33 engines, albeit with two engines failing during the grand 33-engine static fire. This history of Booster 7's test campaign underscores the intricate and unpredictable nature of rocket engineering. Each test, failure, and success contributed to refining the technology, highlighting the iterative process towards perfection. However, with Booster 9, testing approach seems different. The campaign has been characterized by speed and ambition, with fewer tests before attempting a 33-engine fire. The achievement of firing 29 out of 33 engines is indeed impressive, 
particularly when considering Booster 7's initial struggles with just three engines. What sets Booster 9 further apart is the diversity in its engine lineup. The engines on Booster 9, ranging from serial number Raptor 73 to Raptor 186, span a difference of over 100 serial numbers. This implies an evolution of design, tweaks, and refinements across this range, potentially introducing variations in timing tolerances and performance. Some of these engines even share lineage with those used on Booster 7. SpaceX faces the challenge of coordinating 33 engines that possess subtle differences in build and capabilities. SpaceX has mentioned experimenting with a new firing sequence, indicating that precise synchronization down to the millisecond might be critical. The intricacies of rocket startup mean that even the smallest deviations can have significant impacts. Additionally, it's essential not to hastily blame the Raptors for the issues faced by Booster 9. Premature shutdowns could be caused by a myriad of factors, from technical glitches in the startup process to problems related to complex fuel flow mechanisms. Shortly after the static fire, Booster 9 was moved using Mechazilla's arms and placed on a transport stand. It was then transported to the first Mega Bay, a facility that had been modified to accommodate retrofitting prototypes with hot staging hardware. The step was undertaken with the understanding that the addition of heavy shielding, likely requiring welding, would be better suited for the Mega Bay environment. A noteworthy sentiment that's emerged from this chatter is the notion that developing the Raptor engine should be akin to a leisurely stroll in the park, at least in theory. SpaceX, after all, boasts a noteworthy accomplishment, the creation of the Merlin 1D engine, which has established itself as a workhorse of the Falcon 9 rocket, demonstrating commendable reliability and performance. The comparison between the Raptor and the Merlin engines is an intriguing one. With the Merlin 1D, SpaceX has already shown its prowess in constructing an engine that not only meets but exceeds expectations in terms of dependability. This achievement adds to the expectations surrounding the Raptor engine's development. It's almost as if the success of the Merlin 1D has set a high watermark, a benchmark against which the Raptor engine's progress is measured. Ultimately, these innovations led to a successful maiden orbital test launch of the Starship, proving its aesthetics and durability. During the challenges, SpaceX's dedication to perfecting the Starship's welding techniques has brought them closer to realizing their vision. Anticipation grows for the next launch that promises to amaze us once again. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.